Seventh grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics, unit six, lesson four, reasoning about equations and tape diagrams, part one. Problem number one from seventh grade unit three, lesson one. Draw a square with side length seven centimeters. A, predict the perimeter and the length of the diagonal of the square. I've drawn a square with side lengths seven centimeters. The perimeter is all the lengths around the square, seven plus seven plus seven plus seven, or seven times four, and that's 28. The perimeter is going to be 28 centimeters. It's going to be a little bit trickier guessing the length of the diagonal line. We know it's going to be longer than seven centimeters in length, but how much longer? Let's take the diagonal line and rotate it so it's parallel with a side length. Since the side lengths are seven centimeters long, we can put a mark about halfway, which would represent half of seven. That's about 3.5 centimeters. I can use this mark as a guide to help me mark individual units. After marking seven centimeters, I can continue marking centimeters till I go past the end of the line. I know this is not exactly a prediction, but I'm also not using a ruler. I'm just estimating it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's nine and a half, and it's a little bit beyond nine and a half. Maybe it's about 9.6 centimeters. My prediction for the perimeter is 28 centimeters. And we know that the diagonal line will be more than seven centimeters. My prediction for the length of the diagonal line is about 9.6 centimeters. B. Measure the perimeter and the length of the diagonal of the square. Well, the perimeter is 7 times 4, or 28 centimeters, and the length of the diagonal line is 9.9 .9 centimeters. C. Describe how close the predictions and measurements are. I was correct with the perimeter. My prediction for the length of the diagonal line was 3 tenths too short. Problem number two from seventh grade unit five, lesson nine. Find the products. Products mean multiply. A, this is a positive times a negative, so I know my answer is going to be a negative. I'm multiplying negative 0.09 by 100. That means I need to move the decimal two places to the right. So 100 times negative 9 hundredths equals negative 9. B. I'm multiplying a negative times a negative, so I know my answer is going to be a positive. 7 times 11 is 77, so 7 times 1.1 is going to be 10 times smaller than 77, or 7.7. .7. C. This is a negative times a positive, so I know my answer is going to be a negative. 5 times 7 is 35, and 0.3 times 5 is 1.5, so 35 plus 1.5 is 36.5. So negative 7.3 times positive 5 equals negative 36 and 5 tenths. D. This is a negative times a negative, so I know my answer is going to be a positive. And 2 tenths times 3 tenths is 6 tenths. So negative 2 tenths times negative 3 tenths equals positive 6 tenths. Problem number 3. Here are three stories. A family buys six tickets to a show. They also pay a $3 parking fee. They spend $27 to see the show. Diego has 27 ounces of juice. He pours equal amounts for each of his three friends and has six ounces left over for himself. Jada works for six hours preparing for the art fair. She spends three hours on a sculpture and then paints 27 picture frames. Here are three equations. A. Decide which equation represents each story. What does x represent in each equation? 3x plus 6 equals 27 matches Diego's story and x represents the equal amount of ounces given to each friend.
6x plus 3 equals 27 matches the family buying six tickets story, and x represents the price of each ticket. The plus 3 represents the parking fee that they paid. 27x plus 3 equals 6, that matches Jada's story. X represents the time Jada spent on each picture. And the plus 3 represents the 3 hours she spent on the sculpture. B. Find the solution to each equation. Explain or show your reasoning. 3x plus 6 equals 27. We need to solve for x. We can solve this in two steps. First, let's take away 6 from both sides. Now we have 3x equals 21. Now to solve for x, we have to divide both sides by 3. That's the second step. 3x divided by 3 equals 1x, or x, and 21 divided by 3 equals 7. Let's move on to the next equation. 6x plus 3 equals 27. Let's take away 3 from each side. Now it reads 6x equals 24. To get the x by itself, we need to divide by 6 on both sides. 6x divided by 6 equals 1x, or x, and 24 divided by 6 equals 4, so x equals 4. Let's solve for x on the last equation. 27x plus 3 equals 6. We need to subtract 3 from both sides. 27x plus 3 minus 3 equals 27x, and 6 minus 3 equals 3. Now the equation reads 27x equals 3. To get the x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 27. 27x divided by 27 is 1x, or x, and 3 divided by 27 is 3 over 27, or 3 27ths. And that can be simplified. 3 divided by 3 equals 1, and 27 divided by 3 equals 9. So x equals 1 ninth. C. What does each solution tell you about its situation? Well, the first one tells me that Diego gave each friend 7 ounces of juice. The second one tells me that each show ticket costs $4. And the third one tells me that Jada spent one ninth of an hour painting each frame. Problem number four. Here is a diagram and its corresponding equation. Find the solution to the equation and explain your reasoning. 6x plus 11 equals 21. I know that 21 minus 11 equals 10, so 6x must have the value of 10. We can write that as the equation 6x equals 10. Solve for x by dividing both sides by 6. 6x divided by 6 equals 1x, or x, and 10 divided by 6 equals 1.6 repeating. Or as a mixed number, x would equal 1 and 2 thirds. Problem number 5, from 7th grade Unit 5, Lesson 7. A. Plot these points on the coordinate plane. To plot these points, you always have to start at the origin. The origin is this location here, where the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, intersects with the y-axis, the vertical axis. Point A, the coordinates are 3 and 2. That means that we're going to move to the right three places from the origin, and move up two places. In other words, you start at the origin, move to the right along the x-axis three units, then you move vertically two units. That's where you can put your point and label it A. B. The coordinates for B are 7.5 and 2. That means that you start at the origin, move to the right 7.5 units, and then move vertically two units. This is the location where you can plot the point for B and label it B. C. The coordinates for C are 7.5 and negative 2.5. This means you're going to start at the origin, move to the right 7.5 units, then you're going to move down vertically 2.5 units. This is the location you would plot point C. D. The coordinates for point D are 3 and negative 2. This means you're going to start at the origin, move to the right along the x-axis 3 units, then down vertically 2 units. This is the location you would plot point D. B. What is the vertical difference between point D and point A? Here you can see the number of units between point D and point A, but remember the question asks, 
What's the vertical difference between D and A? And difference means subtraction. The problem would be the Y value for point D minus the Y value for point A. That's because the Y axis is the vertical axis. Since the Y value for point D is negative two and the Y value for point A is two, we can rewrite this as negative two minus two because we're finding the vertical difference and difference means subtraction. Since negative two minus two equals negative four, then we can say the vertical difference between point D and point A is negative four. C, write an expression that represents the vertical distance between point B and point C. The Y value for point B is two, and we're finding the vertical difference between point B and point C. So that means that this is going to be a subtraction problem. So the Y value for B, which is two, minus the Y value for C, which is negative 2.5. So the expression would be two minus negative 2.5. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.